In CSS Grids we have grid items, which are the direct children of a grid container. We create one by adding the property display grid to an element. This will stretch and shrink the grid items when we specify the columns and rows. The grid items will position themselves in tracks, which is the common name for columns and rows throughout the video. To define columns we can use the property grid template columns, which will allow us to specify a width for every column by separating them with a space. We can define rows with the property grid template rows in the same pattern as we did with columns. In CSS grids we have fractions which let us divide columns and rows responsibly. If the total space of a grid container is 100% we divide that by the amount of fractions we have defined. We can use the helper function min max to define the min and max size of a track. This will shrink your track to the min value when other tracks want more space and lets it stretch to the max value when there is space. Repeat is a helper function you can use to create repetitive tracks and to avoid unnecessarily long definitions. To make a track take up the rest of the space, set it to auto. Every track lie between grid lines. By default, these start from 1 and increase by 1 from left to right and top to bottom. We can also reference these in the reverse order by using negative values. We can use these lines to set a specific start and end to our grid item. One nifty trick is to name the lines you are going to use, which makes it easy to remember when our layout becomes more complex. We use the properties grid column start and grid column end to position the grid item left to right. Grid row start and grid row end positions them in the top to bottom axis. If we just want the grid item to be two columns wide and don't care where it starts, we can use the span keyword. For grid template rows and grid template columns, we can use the shorthand property grid template, which first takes rows, then we add a slash, and then add our columns. We can shorten the grid row start and grid row end with the property grid row. We put a start number or name of a grid line first, a slash, and then the end number or name of a grid line. The property grid template areas can name areas within the grid. We can use this to easily position a grid item in the right place. You do this by creating a miniature of the grid in the property. To leave an empty space we can add a dot. We get implicit tracks when our grid items can't fit in our explicit rows and columns. We can control these by using the grid auto flow property. By default this is set to row but we can change it to column row dense, which tells the grid to fill holes with our overflowing grid items before adding them to implicit rows, and column dense, which tells the grid to fill holes and otherwise add them in an implicit column. We can set the size of the implicit rows and columns with the property grid auto rows and grid auto columns. To manipulate the space between our rows and columns, we can use the column gap and row gap property. When our grid is a set width and our columns isn't taking up the entire space of the grid container, we can use justify content to move the columns to start, end, center, space between, which gives the tracks even gaps towards other tracks, space around, which gives every track even space to the left and right, and space evenly, which arranges all gaps to be of equal size. The same goes for the rows, where we can use the align content property to arrange the rows with the same values as we had with justify content. We can arrange grid items inside their columns with justify items. The default is stretch, but we can also set it to start, end and center. The same goes in the other direction, where we can use align items. Grid items can arrange themselves by using the properties justify self and align self. If you like the content, please like and subscribe. Thank you, bye.